Thank you for the opportunity to present this research. I'm one of the uh, colorectal fellows from McGill University. I have no conflicts of interest to disclose. So we know that uh, historically the main uh, method of management of perforated or uh, purulent or feculent peritonitis for diverticulitis is a Hartman's procedure. And as we heard in the last uh, talk on complex diverticular, uh, diverticulitis management by our panel of experts, um, there is increasing evidence that resection with primary anastomosis may be performed safely even in the face of marked contamination. Resection in primary anastomosis with or without a diverting ileostomy has been included as one of the treatment options in several RCTs. Um, however, the decision to perform a diverting loop ileostomy was always left to the discretion of the surgeon and was, was not actually um, part of randomization, except in the uh, di uh, diverti trial, which randomized patients to Hartman's versus primary anastomosis and diverting loop ileostomy. However, of the 45 patients that were randomized to the primary anastomosis and loop ileostomy uh, group, a third of patients didn't actually have a loop ileostomy performed, and this was a violation of the study protocol. And as such, there's evidence of surgical equipoise regarding the role of a loop ileostomy in the context of a primary anastomosis in the emergency setting for diverticulitis. And there's really no level one evidence for or against the use of a loop ileostomy after resection in primary anastomosis for perforated diverticulitis. We know that performing a Hartman's versus a primary anastomosis is an important intraoperative clinical decision in case-by-case -case basis. However, once the decision to proceed with a primary anastomosis is made, the benefit of adding a loop ileostomy in the emergency setting where the colon has not been bowel prepped is unclear. And so the aim of our study was to compare 30-day morbidity following primary anastomosis with or without an ileostomy for patients with perforated diverticulitis in the emergency setting. We queried the American College of Surgeons National uh, Surgical Quality Improvement Program over the years of 2005 to 2016, looking at all adult patients who had left-sided colectomy with uh, resection and primary anastomosis, plus or minus a diverting loop ileostomy for perforated diverticulitis in the emergency setting. Diverticulitis was uh, identified based on ICD-9 and ICD-10 codes. And the left-sided colectomy with anastomosis was identified based on CPT codes for primary procedure. And a diverting loop ileostomy was identified either as part of a primary procedure CPT code or as a concomitant or other procedure uh, CPT code. We wanted to make a, as balanced of a group as possible, as well as to exclude any uh, non-perforated cases, and as such, we excluded any non-emergency cases or any patients who were classified as having a clean or clean contaminated wounds, because this is not in keeping with our patient population. We also excluded patients who were not eligible for primary anastomosis. Um, most surgeons would consider patients who have septic shock or ASA5 to not be uh, candidates for an anastomosis. And as such, we also excluded patients with a Hartman's procedure who had a right-sided colectomy, total colectomy, diversion alone, or who had an on-table colonic lavage. Our outcomes of interest were as follows. We were interested in looking at the total number of surgical site infections, organ space SSI, post-operative sepsis, reoperation, and length of stay. So we identified 1,400 patients who met our inclusion criteria. The majority of patients, so uh, 1,211 patients, had primary anastomosis alone, and 189 had a primary anastomosis with a diverting loop ileostomy. When we looked at patient characteristics, they were similar in terms of age and gender. There was a, a slightly higher BMI um, that was statistically significant but not clinically significant. And what we found was that patients uh, with a diverting loop ileostomy had more uh, dirty wounds and there were some differences in ASA score. When we looked at preoperative data, uh, the patients in the loop ileostomy group had a higher preoperative white count, uh, were more likely to have sepsis preoperatively, and had a longer operative time, uh, which makes sense given that they had a, an additional procedure. And there was a, a lower use of laparoscopy. When we looked at the rate of postoperative complications, there was no difference in the total number of SSI or in the uh, development of organ space SSI uh, or reoperation. Uh, the 
30-day mortality rate was higher in the group with a diverting loop bilioostomy, um, but on a subgroup analysis where we just looked at patients with uh, dirty wounds and excluded contaminated wounds, this was no longer significant. And the group with the diverting ileostomy had mo more postoperative sepsis and longer length of stay. We then performed a uh, multivariable uh, regression analysis after controlling for known confounders, and we found that adding a diverting loop ileostomy was uh, not, did not affect the uh, total uh, SSI rate, and it was not predictive of developing organ space SSI. It, would, it was also not predictive of postoperative sepsis or reoperation, and also was not a predictor of length of stay. So there are several limitations to using a large multicenter database. Although the, the data is validated and uh, this has been well documented, it is still a retrospective study design. And using large databases like this is a potential for miscoding of variables and also limited generalizability to institutions that do not participate in the ACS NISCRIP database. There are also some inherent differences between patients that undergo uh, primary anastomosis versus an anastomosis with a diverting loop ileostomy. In conclusion, we found that adding a loop ileostomy in the setting of a left-sided colectomy with primary anastomosis for perforated diverticulitis in the emergency setting uh, where it's not possible to prep the bowel was not associated with improved outcomes. And as such, the role of a diverting loop ileostomy in the management of perforated diverticulitis in the emergency setting remains debatable. Thank you for your attention.